Hello, everyone. My guest today is Lou Zhang. She's the founder and managing partner of Fusion Fund. In 2017, she was awarded the Forbes 30 Under 30 as a featured honoree in the VC category. The same year, she was selected as Town & Country 50 New Modern Swans. Recently, she was awarded as the Young Global Leader of the World Economic Forum in Davos. Before starting the fund, she was founder and CEO of medical device company for early diagnosis, diagnosis of type 2 diabetes, which was acquired in 2012. She's an advisor and mentor to several innovative programs and incubators in the Valley and also serves as a youth member of a Council of the Future Award. Lou, are you ready to take us to the top? Yes, yes. Hi, Nathan. Hi, everyone. You have such a fun operating kind of background. Why jump onto the dark side and do a fusion fund? Uh, yeah, lots of my friends kind of joke about, okay, now you went to dark side, start to do investing, especially when I first launched my fund back in 2015. But my feeling is when I was an entrepreneur and as you said, an operator, I found it's not easy for a technical founder and also especially founder with strong background in the healthcare or technology to fundraise. It's because they want to fund the investor to better understand the technology and also understand the life cycle of the startup companies. So I kind of feel my background could be a good fit to really help the founder at the earlier stage and become their buddy in the dark side and help them to grow the company in the long term. Now, a lot of folks that listen to this show are analysts or maybe even partners at, at other very large kind of firms, whether it's private equity, VC, et cetera. They look at what you do and they go, man, one day I want to do what Lou did. I want to go out and raise my own fund. Walk me through where your head was at when you decided to go, you know, ask for your first capital for the fund. And I believe it was what, a 70 or $80 million fund, right? Yeah, so actually my fund one was a little bit smaller. It's a sub $20 million fund. And I did the second fund last year, which was a sub $100 million fund. So uh, I was working in another VC firm at that time. And uh, I kind of feel like, okay, I saw the whole ecosystem. And I found my passion is with early stage. And I found I'm pretty good at it with my background experience. And I know people who are also awesome who team up with me in the near future. So what I start to do is... uh, I start to talk with lots of the family offices and also potential investors who are interested in tech and healthcare. I tell them the trend that the innovation cycle is coming back in 2012, 2013. That's a business model innovation. And coming to 2014 and 15, that's more about how to really support the innovation for fundamental tech and the technology application. So they really appreciate my insights on the industry and also feel the passion to work with me. So I, in the, so I, I have to say I have a relatively easy start uh, for mm-hmm. like a fund my first fund. So I got the initial capital from couple LP and start to do investment. And along the way, more and more investors came to me saying that I like your portfolio. I like your strategy. So how we could better work together. So I'm like, OK, I could launch fund two. So that's the fund two last year. So far, we have. Uh, more than $100 million in the management for early stage mm-hmm. technology investment. Let's go back to round one. So what was, the, what was the total raise? You said less than 20. How much was it? it actually, it was 17. 17. And what was the minimum check size? Uh, the minimum check size, you mean for LP or for our investments? For, for the LP. Okay, so for our LP, minimum check size is $1 to $2 million. Okay, great. So you had, call it 10 to maybe 20 investors total. Yeah. And also I put some of my own money into the fund for sure. Okay. Very good. And then walk me through kind of your first few investments. Are you fo- focused mainly on kind of health tech? Um, not really. Actually, I break down the sector into four different categories. The first is industry IoT. So it's how, how to actually adapt a new technology with traditional manufacturing, like even semiconductor industry. And the second one is network technology, including cybersecurity, worrying a world of like Internet of everything. So how to increase the network of speed and also uh, protect the security. And the third one is the artificial intelligence. Actually, I started to invest in data analytics and artificial intelligence back in 2015. Name what name a few of those companies you invested in playing in that space. Uh, so for for the. AI company I invested, uh, you mean from Fund One, right? Or Fund, a- or Fund Two. Okay, sure. So for for the AI company, one company I invested called uh, Stratify is uh, a company I invested back in 2015. It's one of my first uh, couple investment from Fund One, and they're doing AI BI solution for the big and the medium sized corporation to enable big corporation to. You really empower themselves with the technology rather than have a data scientist. So, so far they have more than like uh, $40 million uh, annual revenue. 
So when I invest in them, the valuation is pretty low. They just got started. So it's a great journey to be with them. And some other AI investment I made uh, actually this year is more about combination between AI in healthcare, like computer vision for medical imaging, deep learning for medical imaging. A company I recently closed called Subtle Medical. It's a deep learning for medical imaging to enable us to use the low resolution CT scan, be able to reconstruct the images and provide accurate results to the doctor. So I think that's a big trend, like how to really empower healthcare innovation with the AI technology. If you're only optimizing yourself to, to kind of grow wealth, why did you decide to go the VC route versus take the same 17 million bucks and run it as a private equity firm? Go buy one of these companies, you operate it, you build it, you scale it, then you hold it or you sell it and then do it again over and over? Yeah, that's a very good question, especially considering my operator background. I could also operate a company myself, but I kind of feel like I run my company already. And also I saw the potential by leveraging the VC platform, I would be able to support a more awesome founder with the capital, with the resources and connection. For VC money, it's never only be just capital. It also like include all the like support we could give the give to the early stage founder to make them really grow faster. It's a catalyst. It's a catalyst for their company grow. And to me, personal goal is I actually want myself to become a T-shaped person, letter T. So I have the depths when I was doing my research and also running my own company. Now I want to actually explore on a wider scope, like to see innovation happening in different industry. I would be a, I could run a medical device company. I could run a certain type of like industry IoT company, but not necessarily I could run any company. I believe mm-hmm. there's tons of super talented founder out there and I could just empower them to help them build their awesome company. How are you getting in on these deals? There's a fund that you kind of launched yourself. I uh, imagine you had connections because you're already in the industry, but I know it's very competitive to get into the hot deals. How are you making sure you get in? For sure. When I first started, as you mentioned, it has to leverage the previous connection to get into the hot deals. In Silicon Valley, it's all about the competition uh, for the, the top deal and top founders. And meanwhile, by leveraging the network, that's one side. On the long term, I also start to build up our own, like, uh, deal flow network internally, which including that we have the network across all the technology innovation center in the United States. Because we invest in technology innovation, so we want to really find the best technology and best technical founder when they came out and we start to interact with them. So that's the first connection and also deal flow network we build up. Second deal flow network we build up is actually focused on founder himself. We like founder with operation experience, technical background, and also with big operation uh, experience. So we also have a network with all these awesome founders. They work for a couple years in Facebook or Google, and they start, decided to do a company themselves. We interact with them early on, and uh, when they decided to really spin off to do a company full-time, we jump in and give them the initial capital. And meanwhile, we also have an internal database. That might be not be quite common to see in the smaller firm size like us when we first started. But I believe in data's power. We always talk about empower different, uh, even like empower legacy industry with big data. And we could also empower ourselves with data analytics. So we have the database inside that we input all the company we match, the company we found online, and also awesome founder background across different platform and we do the analysis and find the good one, we just do the outbound uh, reach out. So that one gradually become a much more valuable resource for us to find a very good early stage sales mode company. Lou, which of your current investments on paper have made you the most money to date? Uh, I have a company, that's the first one, uh, first company I invested uh, for fund one. So far, I think they have more than $100 million revenues for this year. But in terms of obviously the valuation attached to that, that's your stake has increased the most on paper in that company. Oh uh, yes, that company, I think the valuation goes up more than a hundred times. That's great. What was that company? Uh, the company name is Grub Market. Say it again, go oh, Grub Market. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. Good. So uh, do you have any, um, do you like investing in any kind of business model? Like will you not touch consumer? You want to do B2B SaaS only? What's your thesis there? Uh. Actually, I'm not against the consumer. I just feel like different firms have to have their own focus and what we're good at and also whether we could be the 
the best supporter for them to really take out money. So not only me and also my teams, uh, my operating team, my partner team, all of us have strong industry background, former operator and technical background. So we're very confident to help the like enterprise SaaS our technology founder rather than the consumer founder. And on the other side, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when I started a fund, I saw the opportunity as business mode, uh, innovation cycle, they go with different stage. And we went through the business model innovation, the hub was back in 2014. So after that, we need the next round of fundamental tech innovation, technology application innovation, and then business model innovation. So to me, kind of see the big trend coming up with technology innovation itself. Got and it. when we consider technology innovation, consumer consumer application is not necessarily the best one. For example, for AI, it's hard to name one killer app for AI application for consumer facing like uh, companies or product. But when we see like AI in industry or AI in healthcare, you could see the full capacity and also advantages to use this technology. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, last question here before we wrap up with the famous five. Of the 70 million you raised in the second fund, what? how much of that capital was from someone that put at least a million bucks in the first in the first fund? Actually, se uh, second fund size is actually almost $90 million. Okay. Just, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think most of, uh, more than 90% of the fund one LP also putting money into fund two. Okay, but my question is how much of the fund two money was from fund one investors? Uh, I think around less than 30%. Okay, good. So you had a lot of new people coming as well. Yes, yes. That's very good. All right, Lou, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, business book, uh, <laughs> the, physics of, uh, the Physics of Wall Street. Yeah. The, the Fitness of Wall Street? Yeah. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? CEO, uh, you mean the CEO in the big corporation right now? Just anyone that you're following or studying. Mm, Mark Zuckerberg. Okay, number okay. four, how many, or number three, what's your favorite online tool for building the business? Excuse me? What's your favorite online tool for building the business? Online tool, uh, Airtable. Airtable, are you an investor? Oh, no, but I'm a user. I'm oh, a client. Or good. On client. Good. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Four hours, four to five hours. That's no sleep. Uh, That's okay sleep. You will be surprised to find lots of investors. They have around four to five hours sleep every day. Oh, my gosh. And what's your situation? Married, single, do you have kids? Uh, I'm single. So, no, <laughs> no kids that you know of? No kids for now. All right. Very good. And do you mind me asking how old you are? I'm um, 29. 29. Okay. Last question. What do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? 20, I think like uh, the harder you work, the luckier you are. <laughs> the harder you work, the luckier you are from Lou. Got a lot of experience in industry, had her own exit operating her own company, then said, you know what, I'm going to go try this myself, raised a $17 million fund one uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, had a lot of success deploying that capital, then raised another fund, 90 million bucks as she looks at scaling that. Her biggest success, Grub Market, again, uh, got into that company and now on paper, that's grown over almost 100x just that position alone. Lou, we're rooting for you. Thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you very much.